Martin for the Supplemental Instruction Series of Videos for Chem 121. And today we're going to be expanding a bit on the specific heat concept. Namely, we're going to be working a problem. That's a problem? That is a problem, indeed. But can you fix the problem? That's the question. I think we can. That's good. I'm Joey Smokey, by the way. Yes, and today we're going to be doing a practice problem with specific heat. Okay, so Kevin, you all know that I have lots of issues with specific heat. Oh, yes. yes. We all know that. Yes. So, I'm curious, you know, when I look at a problem like this, can you give me, like, and give them some pointers on the things that you want to look for, the information you want to pull out of problems okay. like this? Okay, that's, we can certainly do that. Okay, so let's read the problem in case you can't, you know, read it on here. It might be hard to see. So, find the specific heat of copper given 250 grams of the metal heated is heated from 20 degrees to 75 degrees Celsius, of course, and it was found that the amount of energy required to heat the substance from that, from that temperature to the other temperature is 5,000 joules. Okay. Now, of course, this is a word problem being the bane of most students' existence. <laughs> but, not to worry, we can boil it down to something, you know, manageable. Okay. So if I remember right, the equation that we're dealing with here is going to be Q, uh -huh. and that represents energy, right? That represents the energy. Okay, and then we have the mass, mm -hmm. okay, represented by M. Then we have the specific heat. That's right. Which is the capital C, right? That's right. Times the capital C. Mm -hmm. And then we have the change in temperature, or the delta T. That's right. Okay. So this is our equation, uh -huh. and theoretically we're supposed to find all this information in the problem. That's right. Okay, so basically we just have to find that then. Yeah, so essentially what we're looking for is three of the variables that will help us, you know, find the last variable. Okay. So, let's take a look. So, we're given that we have 250 grams. What does that sound like to you? That sounds like a mass. Alright, so we have our N. Fair okay. enough. Alright, and then it goes from 20 degrees Celsius to 75 degrees Celsius. Now that's a range of temperatures. That's mm -hmm. our so our twenty degrees Celsius is going to be our initial temperature, or our first temperature, and then our seventy five degrees Celsius will be our final temperature. Now we're given temperatures, but we want to know the change in temperature. Well, that's that's simple enough to figure out. You just have our delta T just has to be the final temperature minus the initial temperature, which is just 75 minus 20, and that gives us a total of 55 degrees Celsius. Okay, so I have a question. Uh -huh. How do we know which one is the initial temperature and which one is the final temperature? Well, that comes from the context of the problem. When it said you're heating from something to something, the from part, for the from temperature is your initial, and the two temperature is your final. Okay. It also works if you're cooling things down. So you, maybe you're cooling from 75 to 20 degrees. It's all from the context of the problem. Okay. So from his initial to his final. Yes. Okay. All right. And now we read on. We know that we have 5,000 joules. I'll put that up there. Now, what quantity is that going to be? I'm going to say that's Q, since we're dealing with energy here. All right. That's our Q, our energy. Okay. Now, what variable does that leave us with? What do we still not know? All right. That's right. We don't know our specific heat. Okay. And that makes sense, since it says find the specific heat anyway. So. All right. And so, we want to manipulate this equation so that we can get the specific heat, the C, by itself. And so I'm going to rewrite it here. It just boils down to simple algebra. If we want to get rid, if we want to just get the C by itself, what do we have to divide both sides by? Okay, I'm going to test my math skills. Well, if we want to get the C all by itself, I'm assuming we got to get rid of the M and the delta T. That's right. So to undo multiplication, we do division. That's right. Okay. And so we're just going to divide both sides by M and delta T. Those go away. And then our grand equation is 
rearranged is C equals Q over M times delta T. And from this point, it's just a matter of plugging in what values we got here into this equation. Okay. And so that's going to be our 5,000 joules over 250 grams and 55 degrees C. Okay. So that's pretty simple. You know, explain that way, it makes a lot of sense to me like that. Yeah. So. And then notice that when we get our answer, the units are going to be in terms of joules per gram degrees Celsius. And that's specific heat. That is specific heat. That's where it comes from because you basically have joules up here divided by grams and degrees Celsius. And so that's why you have these funky units here. Okay. That's pretty cool. All right. All right. Got to clear your time, huh? Yep. Okay. Let's find out what this bad boy measures. Okay. So let's see here. We have the bottom stuff when you multiply that out. Is that big number? Okay, so we go that divided by that equals 0.363. All right, and that is our answer, and I believe that's close to the actual value for copper, which is pretty good. That's pretty cool. All right. So awesome. that was an example of how to work one of these specific heat problems. Hopefully, it's not as intimidating as it might have been before. Definitely not for me. It makes a lot right. more sense now. That's good. Alrighty. Thank you, Kevin. Mm -hmm. We'll see you later. We will see you.